Welcome to this matte painting for filmmakers video presentation on the matte painting pipeline. Questions that we're going to be answering in this video are where does matte painting fit into a typical VFX pipeline and how to fit matte painting into your current pipeline. If you would like to watch more videos on matte painting related topics for feature and independent film then please go over to the matte painting for filmmakers website that is mp the number four fm dot com and you can see those there the first question that we're going to be tackling here is where does matte painting fit into a vfx pipeline and as you can see from this very basic flowchart that matte painting is currently not in it are you able to tell where matte painting would fit in and if you're having a hard time answering that question you're in good company because there's a lot of people out there that have been in the industry for years that have a very hard time answering that question and the reason is because matte painting connects in several places throughout the pipeline because of its versatility we're going to be going over each of those and we're going to be talking about the implications of each one matte painting feeding comp elements is the first and simplest way that we're going to be talking about how matte painting fits into a VFX pipeline in this scenario matte painting is somewhat detached from the whole of the pipeline but comes right before comp and feeds comp elements. This is where matte painting gets a plate, paints on top of it, then hands that off to the compositor for the compositor to integrate the matte painter's painted element into the shot. This can be anything from a distant landscape to a simple patch, and this is for those one-off shots that need a pretty quick turnaround. Matte painting with texturing. This is where matte painting is grouped with texturing, and instead of creating elements for comp, they are creating assets for CG. So matte painters will typically create sky domes and paint things without light, so that these assets can go through the CG pipeline, show up in the lighters file for the lighters to light. I should say here that matte painters are not texture artists, however that is one area of their skill set if matte painting gets pulled into texturing it's typically because they're looking for someone that has a wider breadth of artistic ability to do an odd task matte painters by their very nature are content creators and content finishers so they're able to create imagery and also integrate that imagery into a shot what we're looking at here is one area of what a matte painter is able to do the content creating part of that uh, now let's look at the next pipeline scenario where matte painting is content creating and also content finishing. Matte painting using show assets. This scenario is where matte painting uses what's been created in modeling and texturing. They will take these assets, modify them, and lay them out in a 3D scene. They will then light and render a single frame in order to paint on top of and then project back onto geometry. The matte painting will then be pre-comped and then delivered to compositing. Working this way allows matte painting to be fast, efficient, and flexible, and matte painting is able to use both sides of their skill set, which is the content creating and the content finishing. They're able to create the assets, and then they're able to integrate those into shots. If you want to know more about why matte painting works this way, then please go over to the Matte Painting for Filmmakers website, and there are two videos there called Why Matte Painting Works and How Matte Painting Works that I think could answer some of your questions. Matte Painting Parallel Workflow. In this last variation of the pipeline, matte painting creates its own assets instead of what would have been traditionally created in modeling and texturing. The reason for this is because asset requirements for matte painting can be vastly different than what is needed in a full CG process. Matte painting assets are often lighter and cheaper to make and are tailored to a specific shot. The actual matte painter will either create their own assets or modeling and texturing can create these assets under the supervision of the matte painter. Both this the matte painting parallel workflow and matte painting using show assets not only enables matte painters to be content creators and content finishers but also puts them in a unique position to problem solve and find the cheapest solution for shots in essence 
this is the matte painting methodology for approaching shots. This matte painting methodology can be used by a small matte department or a large environment department. For more information about how matte departments and environment departments are structured, please watch the video on the matte painting for filmmakers site called matte departments how they are structured. All right, we have just blasted through a lot of information about these four different ways matte painting connects into a pipeline. However, I should say what I have outlined is not necessarily all-inclusive. This represents me taking all the variations out there and putting them into general categories. All right, pop quiz time. If you could put matte painting into one area in your pipeline, which one is the best one? Sorry, it's kind of a trick question because the answer is all of them. I've personally used all of these variations on one show before. This is another example of how matte painting is flexible in meeting the needs of a production in several different ways. In a lot of ways, you can think of matte painting as a Swiss Army knife of the VFX industry. Matte painters have a high artistic ability and they can combine that with the skills of a CG generalist and thus they are able to come up with some cheaper and faster solutions to creative problems. I would however separate these four variations into different categories. A primary and a secondary use for matte painting. The primary use is the matte painting parallel workflow and matte painting using show assets. This is like what I mentioned before where matte painters are content creating and content finishing and thus using matte painting to its full extent. The secondary use, feeding comp elements and matte painting with texture artists, is set up to be a support to the other departments. Now that we have talked about where matte painting fits into the pipeline, we are going to be talking about some solutions of how to fit matte painting into your pipeline. There are a couple initial choices that you could be making when you're trying to figure out how to fit matte painting into your pipeline. It's one, you could jam matte painting into the compartmentalized full CG pipeline, which this pipeline is great for CG, but quite cumbersome to matte painting. I'll be explaining more about this in just a second. Or, no one knows what to do with matte painting, so matte painting sets up a completely separate pipeline from your current pipeline. Both solutions are not ideal because neither of them represents a unification of these two complementing methodologies of matte painting and CG. I'll be going over the right way to fit matte painting into your pipeline, but first some things to consider. First thing to consider is all the different matte painting workflows. These are general matte painting workflows, what is created in what software and how it is delivered. The different workflows are closely related to where matte painting fits into the pipeline based on the needs of a task or a shot. And as you can see, these somewhat parallel the diagrams that we discussed earlier for where matte painting fits into the pipeline. For instance, on the top right is the Photoshop only workflow. This is for the pipeline variations of matte painting feeding comp elements and matte painting with texture artists. On the bottom right is the full environment 3D matte painting workflow in Nuke, which could represent the matte painting using show assets or the matte painting parallel workflow. I'm not going to be going into these in depth right now, but there is a whole video dedicated to the subject on the matte painting for filmmakers website called matte painting workflows where this subject is covered uh, quite thoroughly. I urge pipeline teams to study these workflows when considering the tools and how you're going to fit matte painting into your pipeline. The second thing to consider is what software matte painting uses and the elements that are produced from that software in their working files. The software matte painters would use would include but are not limited to Photoshop, some 3D application like Maya, 3D Studio Max, or Softimage, Nuke, Mari, View, Speedtree, ZBrush, and Mudbox. The elements that are produced from these working files would include projection cameras, projection geo, render passes, projection images, UV textures, pre-comped image sequences, matte painted create, created assets, and nuke scripts. As you can see, this is a lot more complex than let's say lighting, where there's really just one working file, one software used, and only a couple elements produced. 
So your studio has to make the choice of whether to track matte painting working files or to track the elements that are created from these working files or even just track the final output. There are many ways to do this in your pipeline. I'm going to suggest two ways how to track matte painting working files and how to track matte painting elements. Let's first talk about tracking matte painting working files. Most likely your current pipeline does very well at breaking up individual tasks. These tasks are defined by departments that communicate to each other and pass show elements from one end of the pipeline to the other. This diagram represents many people doing one task, as you would see in a full CG pipeline. In order to fit matte painting into your pipeline, you need to collapse some of these tasks into one task, or write a control that essentially makes multiple tasks into one task. This diagram represents one person doing multiple tasks. Not only will this allow matte painting to be fast and flexible within your current pipeline, but will make your whole pipeline lean and scalable, which has some great benefits when you're talking about your pipeline having the ability to handle a small team for a TV commercial or a large team for a feature film. By building this functionality into your pipeline, you are in a better position to track matte painting working files. If your studio is not concerned with tracking how matte painters create elements, in other words, tracking matte painting working files, here's the solution for tracking the matte painting elements that create the matte paintings. On the left hand side we have a command line or web browser based check-in. This is for the simple one-off texturing asset or comp element tasks. But for more complex matte painting shots you can use Nuke as your versioning and check-in tool. When matte painters create multiple elements from multiple software packages, whether small or extensive in number, it all comes together in Nuke at the end. Once the script has been assembled by the map painter, Nuke Image and Geo Read nodes can be programmed to check in all of the different elements into the pipeline. You can have options of checking in the whole script at once or individual elements separately. This allows you to easily track all the elements individually and their dependencies. I should add here that if you only want to track map painting elements, then you still need to provide a backdoor to easily render on your CG farm that collapses all of the tasks needed to render into one task. This is so matte painting can render elements and then check in those rendered elements through Nuke. What we have discussed is by no means a universal solution for how to integrate all the different matte painting workflows into your pipeline. The method for doing this has to be customized to your studio needs. However, my suggestions have two underlying principles that I think, regardless of the solution, need to fill. One that the CG and matte painting complementing methodologies are unified under the same pipeline. And two, it is done in a way that allows matte painting to be fast, flexible, and efficient. Thank you for watching this matte painting for filmmakers production on matte painting pipelines. If you would like to watch more videos, please go over to the matte painting for filmmakers website. That's mp4fm.com. And if you should need any clarification or questions answered about this video, please email me at garfry at gmail.com.